I remember when the last year or two I've been working more actively in the interfaith and human rights space, I myself for years would avoid using the term Zionism um, in that space because my experience at university um, was very negative, even though I'm a very um, liberal Zionist that was formed by going on a UGS Managut trip and seeing the impact of the settlements in, in action. Um, but it just wasn't worth the hassle whenever I brought it up. And that, it's the same for um, Muslim friends of mine I've seen when it comes to the term Palestinian nationalism. So I'm not making this um, one side or the other, and no one I'm saying has got the right answer to this. And with that in mind, I kind of the first thing I kind of wanted to ask um, and I'd be interested in a couple of your um, answers to it is, and please be honest, there's no wrong answer. When you hear the word Zionism, what is the first you know, thought which comes into your um, mind? Um, it can be negative, it can be positive, it can be you don't understand it. Um, and I'd just be quite interested in um, what your views on that um, are, if you have any. And please be, don't feel free to be scared of you know, saying very negative connotations. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, what's, what I'm getting from um, this is that there's a lot of, it's kind of a walking on eggshells um, discussion. And the problem I see, especially on social media, is that the people who take over um, discussion on social media might be the loudest, they're the minority on, on both sides. And I say, like, they're not actually helping um, Israelis or the Palestinians. Um, Laura and um, this will go into more. But people like myself, um, who, you know, we want to learn and have a dialogue, we feel very uncomfortable about getting um, involved because it can lead to anti Semitism and Islamophobia and where we draw the, the line. And so I think it's important first to have an understanding of what I believe, and it's just my personal view, but it's backed up in textbooks, etc., what Zionism itself means. And for me, Zionism goes back thousands of years actually to the, um, there's the word which Ephraim Mervis used, Zion, in, a, in a, um, an essay on Zionism he gave. And it goes back to that yearning for Zionist Jerusalem uh, in context, the yearning to go back to um, Jerusalem. And I know it's also important to Muslims too. So it kind of started like that and it's been there as kind of in the background. but. And there'd been times when there'd been more, a few more Jews going to what was then called Palestine, firstly under the Byzantines and then the Ottomans. And then in the 18th century, especially in Europe, um, at the time we were having the Enlightenment, there was a great rise in anti Semitism and what were called pogroms, literally mass murder of Jewish um, people. And out of that came a guy called Theodor Herzl. And he went to what was the um, Dreyfus case. It's in the news, thanks to John McDonnell. Um, you can look that up on Twitter. I'm not going to say anything on that. Um, but he was shocked as a secular Jewish writer that this proud Jewish patriarch called Alf Alfred Dreyfus was vilified by the French state. And so Zionism came about, from his perspective, as saying, well, if we isolate ourselves, we can't develop. If we integrate we, and assimilate, we get abuse. And so um, the term by Leo Pinsker, a Russian Zionist, auto-emancipation came about. And its living embodiment today is um, what is called the national self-determination of the Jewish people and state of Israel. That doesn't mean anything on borders. It doesn't mean you know, whether you're a more liberal Zionist, a religious Zionist, a socialist Zionist. And, and for me personally, if you believe in the state of Israel's existence, um, you can uh, define if you would like yourself as a Zionist. Also, personally, as a believer in national self-determination, I believe in the national self-determination of the Palestinian state, and that's why um, I've been much more vocal in the last couple of years about saying I'm pro, I'm a Zionist, but I'm also a believer in Palestinian national self-determination too, and I'm in peace and that's not a conflict together. Now the problem is, if we go on to, um, I think it was the third slide. Um, no, not that one. 
um, after that one is um, so you know how like normal people get things like sent to their Facebook pages from friends um, like cats or you know little jiffy dogs and all that sort of stuff well a helpful friend of mine he's very helpful but he is a atheist uh, middle-class guy who's growing more of interest in this area and he's experienced himself he's seen it I can't say where he's working at but it's in a business environment anti-semitism himself and he never really thought it was an issue and it's not coming from it's coming more from, in his case, the far right, but then he says we need to do something about this, what I'm seeing on Facebook. So you start off with Holocaust denial. <coughs> I mean, I think it's kind of, unfortunately, pretty obvious here. Then there's this thing, and this is important, the Kalergi plan. Now, Hope Not Hate uh, in particular has talked about it. It's this um, far right white supremacist idea that the Jews are trying to replace us. And if you look at the manifestos in both the Christchurch um, on the Christchurch mosque bombing, um, recently in Berlin, but also in Pittsburgh. It's this idea that the Jews and the, and the Muslims um, are trying to overtake white civilization, often unfortunately tied in at times with Christianity, but obviously not really understanding a lot of the um, scriptures. And then finally we come to what relates to today. It's this idea, you know, so in here it mentions Israel did 9-11, but it goes back to this idea of Zionism, because you could put the word, you know, Zionism or Jew, and it's often, as you see with anti-Semitism, it's based on conspiracy. And that's, for me, where I draw the line. I have no time whatsoever, personally, for um, Benjamin Netanyahu. Neither do uh, my Israeli relatives. Um, neither do um, uh, a lot of Jews, whether they live in Israel or not. And um, certainly, um, and fairly, many uh, Palestinian Israeli um, Arabs and, and Druze, um, Circassians and up from other backgrounds. But um, I remember in October 2013, there was a cartoon, um, I'll remember off the top of my head, don't worry, um, done by Gerald Scarf in the Times. It was on Holocaust Memorial Week in 2013. I remember because I was working for an MP at the time, I believe, who didn't have a strong opinion either way. Um, and there was a picture of Benjamin Netanyahu sucking the blood on the, um, on the wall. Now, it goes back to this idea of the um, blood libel, which is why Jews were kicked out of um, medieval um, England in the city of York. And unfortunately, we see it today when it comes to discussions on Zionism from people who should know better, like Jenny Tong. Now, Jenny Tong um, is now an independent peer, I believe. She was a Liberal Democrat. She was removed from the party about two years ago, I think. She, at times, claims she's a member, but she isn't. And she has said on a number of times about the IDF, uh, Israel Defense Force stealing organs, etc. Now, you could say, for instance, I have a lot of problems with the way the Israel Defense Forces act in the occupied territories. That's what I personally call it, again disagreement on that um, but you don't need to put that in there's, there's no necessity it's not helping those on the ground and it's also adding a layer of problems onto it and then finally we go to really the nub of it um, which to me is how it affects me um, in my relations with um, today because I online frequently <coughs> get it in the neck from you know, like I'm sure all of you here, the far right, the far, anyone who thinks, I think it comes down to they're refusing to listen, and they think that they can abuse you, but especially online. So without naming the two organisations, um, I got abuse from both a Zionist organisation and an anti-Zionist organisation, and I'm not going to name their names because it's not fair, um, because they took totally different opinions, which is fine, on the um, what Palestinians, and it's fair for them to call this it, the Nakba, and what many Israelis would call Israel Independence Day. But they did it in language, which in my view was either, not knowingly, anti-Semitic, because it was based a bit on, um, what I would say, singling out. And what I mean by singling out is kind of concentrating on ideas like, there was words like the Zionist lobby. And it goes down to this idea of a powerful Jewish lobby. And on the other side, oh, you have all these powerful Muslim states, as if Muslims are responsible for all the... Muslim countries in the world. That's clearly Islamophobic. 
And unfortunately, that's what we see in our debate today, in part. But I want to leave you with some confidence because um, I actually think with talks like this, we, in the last year, I've seen us kind of reclaiming um, the space. Um, especially, I have to be honest, among um, Muslim and Jewish women who um, I find with a lot of males my age, they're very aggressive. They don't quite know how to use that anger. They're very passionate. They're not anti-Semitic or Islamophobic, but they're, for instance, I had a, someone who is a Zionist. I was basically trying to stop him becoming a very extreme, he was being radicalized and watching videos of Katie Hopkins, etc. And I was trying to stop him going that way. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get there on time. And, I'm, and you see the same online, particularly with, um, also when you see with Islamist extremism. But by having these conversations here, um, not saying you know um, Israel right or wrong, Palestine right or wrong, but remembering in a spirit of humanity, we are Jews, we are Muslims, we are members of humanity, we are Christians, we are agnostics, we are Buddhists, Hindus, and we do not want to bring anti-Semitism and Islamophobia to the streets of um, the UK based on a lack of willingness to understand and discuss terms around Zionism and around um, Palestinian nationalism. And finally, um, I want to end with a positive story. So there's a, um, and I'm not gonna go too much into detail because I don't wanna touch on yours, but there's a hospital in Israel which um, has a lot of um, Palestinian, uh, sorry, Palestinians are treated there, but also Jewish, Muslim, and Christian nurses. And there's this lovely video put together by a um, music collective called Ku Alam, and it's just this beautiful video of a Muslim nurse and a Jewish nurse singing together. And they're not hiding, you know, their identity, but they're, you know, respecting each other and sharing in each other and realizing um, that, for instance, realizing that if we are going to change what we see, we need to support um, people like ourselves. We need to be brave enough to go out and to these sort of conversations and learn how we can win, uh, not win the argument, but just start a conversation on it. Because unless we do that, unfortunately, as we see on social media, um, and we see whenever Sadiq Khan um, speaks up on behalf of the Jewish community or on behalf of the Muslim community, you'll have some people saying, for instance, oh, he's the mayor of, Mayor of Tel Aviv was one of the ones going across three years ago. And we can't let them win, because you don't have to agree with Sadiq Khan's politics. You don't have to think that Benjamin Netanyahu is the best thing since sliced bread. I don't, by the way. Um, but you do have to recognize that we're talking about people here. And when what happens with anti-Zionism at times is you strip away based on conspiracies, based on um, seeing it as a devil incarnate, but people who believe this, they're people too. And it's such a wide-ranging ideology from the most far right, which I don't have any track with, to the far left and everything in between. It's like conservatism, liberalism, socialism, various forms of um, Islamic thought, which I'm learning myself. Palestinian nationalism is also the same, a very wide ideology. And so we need to have that conversation. And I hope, especially in the questions, I can answer um, your um, thoughts on all of this.